intended cover-up of the unfortunate incident. Take a look. Thursday, June 22nd, 2017. The National Transport and Safety Authority, NTSA, is carrying out a crackdown on drunk drivers and those driving without proper documentation on Mombasa Road, just next to Bunyala Roundabout in Nairobi. The time is 4.07 a.m. A few minutes later, a drunk driver runs over the erected road barrier and in a bizarre incident, a man is hit and the driver speeds off. It is a hit and run. KTN News captured the last and only images of that incident. Images that will later that day star public fury. Police officers had requested us to provide them with footage that will in turn help them in investigations. But that was before we received a call to check on another accident at Nyayo Roundabout, less than a kilometer away. Coincidentally, it was the same vehicle. The driver, it appeared, had driven directly onto the roundabout, bringing him to a halt. The impact was evident. The search for justice began for the man seen here being hit. KTN News has today traced him exactly a month after the incident. Richard Njuguna, for that is his name, narrates his side of that story that almost claimed his life. Mm. We had earlier reported that he was an NTSA officer. But Richard has now confirmed he works with the Blues Towing Company that was attached to the NTSA that fateful morning. He tells a story of pain and perseverance as he had to foot his hospital bill on his own and with very much difficulty. Okay, in the end of St. Peter's, <coughs> on Thursday, I was in the hospital. So on Friday, I was in the theater. I was in the theater on Saturday. Wednesday, I'm the driver of that vehicle whom KTN News has since established was one Emmanuel Ebei Oyen was arrested. Early information we received indicated that he was arraigned in court at the Makadara Law Courts. However, a file after file search at the Makadara Law Court does not show anything on his name. Details that emerges later have directed us to Milimani Law Courts where the case was indeed mentioned on the 27th of June this year. According to court documents KTN has seen, charges leveled against Emmanuel include careless driving. Emmanuel, 
who was driving the Range Rover with Uganda number plate UAN 777P is also charged with the driving under the influence of alcohol. Lastly, he is charged with the driving without a driving license. Emmanuel Yebe denied the charges and was released on a cash bail of 20000 but in an interesting twist to this story, the police did not include the morning accident as part of the charges. In fact, Juguna tells us that no one has contacted him about the events of that morning. He has not been called upon to even give a statement. The court file which lies at the Milimani Law Courts and which KTN News has seen lists Richard Njuguna as witness number one. That notwithstanding, Richard has no idea about this case whose mention already happened and whose hearing is set to take place on the 1st of August, just nine days from now. But is it deliberate? <laughs> Police station could you at a report with him and other statements. Jandica now come to Ladam of Tafoto and the statement. I come to Mindafta. The Kinu Konako in communication now while I watch all Kuwa Palo on the scene that day. Okay, while I too while in Peraka Hospitali, how to do it? What to do? Majinango to Elambanga Sim. Richard, who is also called Jim at times, is now incapacitated, not able to work to fend for his family. His small daughter knows that without these crutches, her father will not walk, but without an idea why. The National Transport and Safety Authority maintains that cases of drunk driving are on the downward trend. At least according to Lieutenant Harred Adan, the Deputy Director of Safety Enforcement and Accident Investigations within the NTSA. We have seen quite a reduction in terms of the drunk driving offenders of late. This is a result of our actions to promote road safety. That has something to do with the breathalyzer, which NTSA says has really helped them in nabbing drunk drivers and reducing fatalities on the roads. But again, amid controversy that surrounds the legality of the equipment. After a court challenge on Alcoblo, NTSA made a successive comeback by changing the clause under which they were charging the offenders and reintroduced the breathalyzer. The purpose of the drink driving uh, exercise is to promote safer roads. The law or well, the court ruling did not uh, uh, abolish. So drug driving exercise is still legal. But the court gave us a leeway apart from depending on the measure. The other parameters that a police officer will look into to ascertain whether this person is capable of physical control of the vehicle. The, the predalyzer is still legal to undertake the, the test. And you charge the offenders under section 44.1. But you go a step further to physically ascertain whether an individual is capable of be control of the vehicle. Through the way the individual walks, through the, the way the individual interacts with the officers prior and during the test. But we have got a limit of 0 0.35. So if you're above the 0 0.35, then you are driving above the legal limit. Statistics from the National Transport Authority continue to highlight pedestrians as most affected victims of road accidents. 589 pedestrians have so far died on the road as of July 17th this year. Those statistics continue to show that 171 drivers have lost their lives in crashes across the country. But there is something about the numbers. Yes, most of the victims are pedestrians. The way we cross our roads, in fact, contributes to those fatalities. As a pedestrian, and depending on the time, you need to wear reflective uh, material. But you find a pedestrian dressed in black, totally black, crossing a road at a designated point. And maybe those are the wee hours of the night. And to put it clearly, most of these pedestrian fatalities happen at night. 
past 8 p.m. when the visibility is poor. So when the visibility is poor, and you as a BDSL, you are not dressed properly, then that contributes to the fatality uh, cases. This is Nyo Roundabout. It is at this exact spot 31 days ago where a drunk driver almost claimed the lives of three people, two of whom he was driving. The damage is still evident. And then rises the question of who should bear responsibility for damage caused on our roads by careless drivers. Probably we need to be having that conversation soon. There indeed is something about the numbers. Imagine that up to a thousand people have died in road accidents every year for the past five years. Imagine if the drivers were a little more careful. Imagine if the drivers obeyed zebra crossing and pedestrians actually used those designated crossing areas. Then imagine the number of families that have been thrown into pain, sorrow, confusion and fury as a result of road accidents. Now imagine if the government could ensure justice for hit and run victims whose perpetrators are known. Can one really reinvent themselves from such permanent injustice? Brian Obuya, KTN News. Well, that report by Brian Obuya brings us to a break at 27 minutes past the hour you're watching Weekend Express. Do stay with us to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll focus on matters health.